Kuzangbo, I'm Ashok Tirwa. In this program, we have Professor A.G. Iyer, uh, Editor-in-Chief and Publisher of Inertia Magazine, uh, Asia's premier journal on sustainable energy and power. Welcome to the show. Let's hit to the uh, Indian scenario first about the energy, in the, especially in the energy sector. Right. Now, India has estimated around 800 gigawatt by 2030. It Absolutely. wants to exploit or at least make an investment up to that. So could you tell us more about it? Absolutely. See, we need roughly 800 to 1,000 gigawatt, mm. to be very frank. That means we are looking at a target of 1 terawatt by 2032. Mm. I would give the timeline as 2032. Mm. And that needs a rough investment of 1.2 trillion US dollars. So it's mm. massive. Mm. That's almost uh, close to 60% of India's GDP, you know, which of $2 trillion today. If you see, that's the kind of investment just one sector called mm. energy and power and the power infrastructure needs today. Mm. I have in fact not added the oil and gas which India will expand. I have only added the power sector and related energy aspects and infrastructure related to that. So you can, you can imagine what is the type of scale that is. Mm. And I think the whole world will be driven by this, this entire upheaval in India. Mm -hmm. It will be like business for everybody. So India would be driving that entire economic surge mm. in the world markets. So currently we have 240 gigawatt roughly and uh, this figure is from the central statistics organization. I'm not quoting the CA figures because they are at 228 but these are the capacities that come on and off so there will be difference in these two capacities of the organizations that report the statistics in India. On the other side, what is the shortfall? Shortfall is massive. Uh, according to the Inertia Foundation prepared report and uh, an estimate which is, my, which is the public trust where my researchers work we have an 80 gigawatt shortfall in the country at this point of time. That means many villages in India are off the power grid for at least 12 to 16 hours. And that is a reality even for a powerful country like India. We have to serve our villages and those villages that do not receive continuous power. They do receive power, like the pumps are energized. Or I think almost all agricultural pumps in India mostly are energized. Yeah. So that means there is a good surge in the agricultural economy. But then there is a flip side to that. So could you tell us what is the Bhutan's role in that? How can Bhutan play a part? See, in for us, you know, it's such a big scene that whatever Bhutan wants to sell to us, we are ready. Because if you see the size and scale, because when I was here, I was trying to explain to people this, the, the nature of this entire growth is so big that uh, Bhutan is a good ally, good friend. It's a strategic initiative, whatever we are doing here. It may not make a very massive difference to India. See, you are adding by 2017 with the coming of this Puna Sanchun only 465 megawatt as far as the information mm -hmm. I got. That may be 218, 2018 if it is spills over because of certain uh, geological conditions here, you know, some delays happen. Then 2017, 2018 is the timeline that you are seeing the Puna Sanchun 1 and 2 will be on the grid, you know. So if they come on the grid, what you are exactly, if the whole capacity comes and you are seeing 2000, uh, you know, me megawatt, but it will not come all together. We will see from 500 or 700 megawatt. And what is the treaty with Bhutan? It is a very soft treaty. We are saying you will sell surplus power to us. Mm -hmm. So, in the context of the relationship, you must see, in India will be, will say, okay, you sell. If you are <coughs> comfortable, you want to consume, you please consume. We are not here to tell Bhutan what it should do with its energy. We have done the job. India has been your greatest friend. They built the Tala build the Puna Sancho, they'll build the Magadechu and then you, you see how you want to go forward. I as a neutral party would say it's, Bhutan is a friend and we have helped and we have done what we have done for Bhutan and if Bhutan wants to make business in this, there is certain condition, mm -hmm. you know, there are two arguments that have come in the last few days. One set of the team says one rupee 98 paisa is a low cost but uh, our assessment is that is a very good uh, cost at this point of time, it's not a bad cost at this point of time because I'll tell you some of my depreciated assets in India produce power as 98 rupees and this is in very rich states like Mara, 98 paisa <coughs> per unit. It is in states like Maharashtra. So it is a pooling cost of power that India takes. Second, India is soft on the farmer. The farmers pay, sometimes don't pay. Like we get three hours, four hours electricity for pumping into the field. Farmers do not pay for that many times. It's still free power in my country, right? And if they pay, they pay a marginal cost of electricity. And that is becoming huge because we don't have metering in my country. I am just explaining so that people in Bhutan understand the problem of a 1.2 billion country. I cannot send 60% of my population off the grid. They are poor. They can't even buy two meals a day. You know, they may buy one meal a day. Some policies have come. They have brought up. Uh, there, of course, the farm sector or rural sector in India has risen. 
but still there are former suicides in my country. So th both the things are there. So there is constructively, we are a better country than what we are several years ago. We are a very strong country. I think Europe is uh, looking at us in a big way. America is wanting invest to do it. They all want to come to India. But we have our own problems and we will sort it our own way. Mm -hmm. And we are going to be soft on our poor people. We want them to come up. So if they were to come up, then the price of supporting the poor has to be paid by the rich of India, which is urban India. So if urban India has a tariff of rupees 7, I think in discussions in Bhutan, and people who are doing the discussion do not even understand the subject, and it's useless discussion. People have come to me in this trip, mm -hmm. and they said they want to support your farmers. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy, because you must support your farmer, make them grow vegetable. And it was a question of mangoes, you know, I've gone out of the subject. Mm -hmm. But then, mangoes in India are only for X number of seasons. Mm -hmm. But Gujarat eats mango so much that they want 12 months. And if your guys are producing, why should we import from Mexico? Mm -hmm. I would import, uh, I would take it from Bhutan and pay the price for it and let these people get even free power in your country or very low cost power they cannot pay so please understand India and Bhutan have the same logic mm -hmm. we are supporting our poor people mm -hmm. so the price of electricity is also Bhutanese contribution in a small way mm -hmm. to ensuring that India's poor also survive like your poor survive mm -hmm. so take that as a, okay, that, that's take a very that as a positive equation. thing that you said you know yeah even if you are making doing business but at the end of the day the india and bhutan happen to be great friends great friends so could you tell us is it wise for bhutan to force ahead with, with all its potential to exploit all its energy i'll tell you let's for example 10 gigawatt by 2020 yeah, is yeah. it too ambitious for the country like bhutan okay i'll give you a cross link you know to this mm -hmm. a state of gujarat which is 65 million population six and a half crores a small state of india compared to a maharashtra a Western India state, nearby neighbor, with 12 crores population, that is 1.2 million people, right? So now you see this kind of, so sorry, 12 million people, you know, 1.2 crores, uh, uh, sorry, 12 crores kind of population, I'm very sorry. So when 12 crore population state and a six and a half crore population of Gujarat wants to build capacity of 20 to 30 gigawatt and sell to the entire country, this is, I'm talking of a rich state of India, not the situation of Bhutan, wanting to sell to the entire country electricity. Himachal Pradesh wants to send to other parts of the country where they are deficit. So you see what is the situation of Bhutan. See, 30 uh, states of India, like I tell you Arunachal Pradesh, you will not believe me the assets are 150,000 megawatt. And I am telling that we should go right, left and center to make Arunachal the best place of India. Mm -hmm. So if this is my view on hydropower, why should I say anything other than saying Bhutan please make marry, make as much and uh, do the deal. It's a friendly treaty. You will get more cost of power later on. It is not going to be 1 rupee 98 paisa forever. Yeah. There is going to be other treaties. See, for example, today all your projects are funded across a grant system from India. See, in the case of Tala, it was 60% grant. In the case of Pune Sanchu, the grant level is now 30% because Bhutan is becoming confident. Mm -hmm. And the next lot of projects, our grant will come to DGPC directly through your government route. And that grant will be used by DGPC again as equity. So can you imagine a country trying to do everything like this, you know, it's our money. If I tell you some political forces stand up in my country, they will catch hold of the throat of my government and say it is taxpayers' money, why you are investing? Why are you not investing in the northeastern states of India? So, so I tell you this criticism is also being faced by India mm -hmm. and Indian politicians. Right? And I tell you, I will give you the case of Itaipo, the 12,000 megawatt project in the world and one of the finest hydro projects in the world. Mm -hmm. Four countries cooperate, Brazil, Uruguay. Paraguay and Argentina and in this Brazil pays 65% of the electricity Brazil buys mm. and that drives 35% of the GDP of Uruguay. Mm. So if they can do, we are just two countries, There's nobody who is coming in between. So some, um, I must say on this channel to you that some forces are there who are jealous, mm -hmm. not happy about our relationships. Mm -hmm. They are already active in Bhutan and I want to warn you know, through this channel that they are there and they are going to work against the interest of India and Bhutan. Mm -hmm. And this work is very, very aggressive and strong, which we have faced within our own states mm -hmm. in India. How do you rate the de development of hydropower in Bhutan with some of the states in India? Is it, you know, I'll tell you. environment friendly, okay. Okay, good. the way it is carried I'll, out? I'll tell you. I wrote a story last oh. year. You must be remembering when I came to July on the same BBS. That was a timeline when I wrote a story how Bhutan is a great example for Uttarakhand in India because we had that Uttarakhand crisis. Uttarakhand. Because if they were making some small roadside dams, some political fellows, not the big companies. See what is your case. You have involved the best of India. JP, HCC, Gammon, 
L N T. These are construction joint, and earlier some Patel was also there. Unfortunately, they are not part of this right now. But I am saying you have called the best contractors. You have not called the roadside contractors. In India, the same thing in another state of Uttarakhand. There were contractors who we do not even know who the, these people are. They screwed up. What happened? We had a big crisis in Uttarakhand, mm -hmm. right? So Bhutan's development is a great example for India because India was involved in this. Mm -hmm. See, I gave you the names of, and also a chance for your own construction contractors to develop, come in. And and let me tell you, look at Tala. Today Tala has 800 odd engineers. They are all Bhutanese. They are at least 15 or 16 Indians. So don't you see the benefit? for generation. Once we construct and build, we have given it back to Bhutan. It's, it's a gift. You can look at it that way. We are ready to give more gifts. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about the critics also. That, Of course, there are a lot of critics who have said that, you know, the investment that we are making in hydropower yeah. is yeah. like, it's so huge that, you know, the business people will have to pay through their nose in the future. Okay. I, I will counter that straight away. Okay. Where is the investment that Bhutan has made? Don't mm -hmm. feel sad that I'm mm -hmm. saying this. It's all coming from grants, mm -hmm. long-term loans, which any World Bank would also try to give. Mm -hmm. But look at World Bank. We have thrown them out of my country. I'm mm -hmm. sorry I'm saying this here mm -hmm. on your channel. In India, we have rejected World Bank in every phase. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because they are, I tell you, these are the new sahukars of the world. That means these are the new people who want to make you the slaves. Mm -hmm. And in India, I am working against them because we have enough money to fund ourselves. Mm -hmm. We will make Bhutan strong through your project money. If you have a problem, we can reschedule the loan. Suppose mm -hmm. there is a 12 installment, 15 installment has been done in Pune Sancho 2 for you. You want 20 installment, we'll do it. What are we talking? You want an interest rate cut? Discuss with India. Mm -hmm. It is possible to get an interest rate cut if India's uh, uh, prime bank goes through a reverse repo rate calculation for you. Mm -hmm. These are not very, very com complicated models. See, please understand this hydropower money has nothing to do with your rupee crisis. Mm -hmm. I have actually tackled this at the DHI summit mm -hmm. and I questioned everybody and they all say, yes, you are right. Then why do you make such a big noise about hydropower uh, bringing the rupee crisis? Hydropower is not related to rupee crisis. Mm -hmm. Rupee crisis of Bhutan is, it's the aspiration of average Bhutanese today, like in India. Our fiscal deficit grew because Indians started uh, spending more, more studying than. abroad, buying more goods. Oh, instead of one car, now we have all four families, some places in Delhi and Bombay. People have three, four cars at homes. Parking space is not there. You know, houses, they, one house they are not building. They are building a house in remote area for a living, just for the weekend. So if people start spending like this, it is not a question of India and Bhutan. It's a question of the aspirations of people. They will grow rich, they will have more money, they will go liquid, they will go to the bank, take loan and develop all these things. And then you say, now we have crisis. It is so, I tell you, this is the most f lousiest and the filthiest mm. argument I have heard. And I have tackled and... So it's not the hydropower that is... It's not at all, it's your aspiration. So I will give you a solution. Four airlines in Bhutan, put it up. I tell you, just the Gujarati crowd of India, which actually builds all European hotels. Today they are becoming rich because of one crowd called Gujaratis. Mm. And second crowd is Jains. Mm -hmm. who are very big vegetarians. Mm -hmm. If Bhutan makes this as the target, your rupee crisis is over tomorrow, my friend. Start flights across, now Mumbai is starting in May, mm -hmm. do care. Don't put one flight, try to market this. Send your hoteliers to our place. <laughs> Tourism is your biggest revenue earner, like Kerala. Okay, that's in interesting, but let's come back to... Yes, energy. Oh, uh, energy, sure. you know. But no, when but energy is attacked, I have to mm -hmm. give you the alternative. They mm -hmm. were talking of DHI alternatives. Mm -hmm. Throughout the three day, I'm sorry to say, they never discussed this model of mm -hmm. tourism. Okay. Now, just now we are just looking at government to government model yeah. of investment, in, especially in hydropower in Bhutan. Is this model going to change and we can in include more private sector in this 100%. development? I tell you, India's private sector are very rich. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Tata, they bought the Jaguar. Mm -hmm. You know what is Jaguar? It's like yeah, Rolls yeah, Royce purchase. Also. Right? India has now also purchased, uh, Tata also purchased Chorus. Is this only Tata's game? No. I will tell you in India, almost top 50 companies of India are buying assets in Europe. For example, even Tata's recent thing, which uh, I came to know only recently, there were 120 automotive companies in Europe who were sick and all the unemployment was saved because all, and Tata did not throw away anybody after mm -hmm. they took in Europe. It's such a dignified company. Mm -hmm. So I can give an example of such companies in India. There are many of them. We just heard Tata's. But I can tell you there are many of them. Mm -hmm. GVK, there is going to be this HCC. It's mm -hmm. a great company. l &T, great so, company. Yeah. You know, these are all doings, you know. ITC has not come here mm -hmm. because they have nothing to do of with that. Of course, in private sector, India 
India has a potential very powerful powerful people can come in and invest yeah. but what can Bhutan do to improve its own private sector exactly and then improve their you. capacity to involve in hydropower projects I'll tell you I'll tell you, my, of I'll, tell you my friends. I'll become party to it on the channel mm. you show me 50 sensible businessmen of Bhutan who want to take help I will bring joint ventures between them and Indian private sector Indian private sector are very soft they're not what you see they are the people who have worked with a government which is even tougher or unimaginably more uh, lethargic and bureaucratic than the Bhutan government, right? Our mm. people succeeded in a worst bureaucratic environment. So they know what to do and they're very soft on their friends. Mm. The same thing can be taken off there. And I can tell you, once we make you stand, you know, like you do, see, it cannot be that suddenly some companies with no experience says, I will take four professionals and build a dam. It is not possible. Mm -hmm. You have to come through the route. You have to make certain first for it. And I have been the champion of this cause. Last hydropower, hydro vision conclave in July, which was held here, I promoted, <coughs> I said, Bhutanese companies must give work, get work. But they will never get work if Indian companies and Bhutanese companies are not asked to find a sharing agreement. Like there must be some kind of work here. I feel this object, ob obstruction is more coming from, this is my view. Mm -hmm. I think some kind of skepticism exists in Bhutanese government itself mm -hmm. because they feel these contractors actually do not want to do the hard work. That feeling is there. So if that feeling is over, it can mm -hmm. be only over if you allow the Indians and Bhutanese to meet. Mm -hmm. You can't continue keeping this feeling. Allow these people to meet. Allow the business to business meet between the two countries. Because see, the solution lies near you. you see, I'm telling you, for, forget about Europeans entering. I have seen them work. In India, 99% of my projects are built by Indians. Mm -hmm. Even a roller compacted concrete dam was built, first one in Asia was built by Patel Engineering in Maharashtra. So I can tell you with such an advanced technique was built by an Indian company, mm -hmm. not by a foreign company. And it is the Asia's only roller compact concrete dam, dam which is Ghatgar near Mumbai. Mm -hmm. So please understand that Indian companies have the expertise to do it, not these global companies. They cannot, constructors, civil engineers come from my country. Or I tell you the other constructors are neighboring China. You know? But Chinese constructions have failed a lot compared to Indians. It's a well-known fact in the world market. Chinese technology is struggling against Indian technology. It's very clear. Everybody knows that the next round of, I would say, strategic <coughs> new products will come from India. For, I'll give you an example. In India, there is, we have opened the market for automotive. There is not even one single Chinese car or a motorcycle mm -hmm. that sells in India. Why? Because the Indian digital fuel injection which was fitted into the motorcycle became a mega success. Mm -hmm. Europe could not do it, but we did. We have bikes which have a fuel efficiency of 85 to 90 kilometers per liter. Now we are coming close to 100 kilometers per liter mm -hmm. with two wheelers. right? So we are the most efficient country in using fuel in the world because of our R&D. Mm -hmm. So you give an opportunity, R&D will come. Now new variety of trucks are coming out of Tata's food. Mm -hmm. Now it's people like Cummins who are cooperating with Tata. So understand what is India. Mm -hmm. India is in a very, and I tell you, in 2014 we'll have change of government. I'm very clear about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm very sure that Mr. Modi's government will be formed. And when that is formed, I can assure you that it's the right time for Bhutan to up the ante. So what yeah. kind of models that we're going to see in the future? I tell you, the future, is, the, the future investment model, I'm very happy with your young entrepreneurs. For example, mm -hmm. I just uh, talked to one of your very young guy, and I'm mm -hmm. very fascinated by this man. I must name him. Mm -hmm. Greener way boy, you know, mm -hmm. Karma I, These are my darlings. Mm -hmm. These are the future of India and Bhutan. Mm -hmm. It is not the uh, people who make uh, Mary want to be a commission agents. They cannot come up. Mm -hmm. We need these young guys. He, who are enterprising. And you look at him. He mm -hmm. says that I face the opposition of being called a trash man. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine this man is doing an extraordinary work in your country when he has no support? He is not a rich businessman. Who will give him favors? He comes from your middle class or upper middle class or whatever you call it. He, run, he has 40 people. He is my darling. Okay. He's my darling. No, I it is this businessman I want to see. So I'm okay. ready to help them and I'm ready to tell India, please uh -huh. support them. Uh -huh. if, if I tell you, they face problem in getting bank loans. I, I feel that Indian banks must come and give loans to even these people. Uh -huh. What's the problem? They're very rich banks in India. Whether HDFC, ICICI. I tell you today, these private banks are also as more powerful than even the public sector banks. And they have liquidity. They can play a part uh, role. For them, it is nothing to come to Bhutan and help a few Bhutanese. How this problem can be solved overnight? Mm -hmm. I think there must be more dialogue between people of India and people of Bhutan. Mm -hmm. Government to government dialogue is a limited dialogue. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tell you, it is the others who will create distrust. 
I will tell you the last thing which I, I feel. The important thing here is, I, as a friend, we should have a faith in ourselves. We have full faith in trust. You. We have full faith People in People will come and say good things and bad yeah. things about it's, it's for, I, I'm very clear. What do you say? India okay. is a highly confident country. India is so confident. See, today in mm -hmm. Sark, everybody has broken the deal. Pakistan mm -hmm. is wasting its time. And the country is destroying mm -hmm. itself. You know, Nepal, it is in dire straits. Mm -hmm. If it wants to work with India, it's open. It can sell more hydropower than mm -hmm. ne Nepal. It will never be able to sell because of the attitude that they have, mm -hmm. right? If they want to sell, they have to change their attitude. You know, mm -hmm. Bangladesh, it's a country that was actually created by India, whether mm -hmm. anybody likes it or not. Now, they, yes, it mm -hmm. is created. Yeah. It is a de facto creation of India. Yeah, yeah. You know, in that time, US kept quiet. They did not have the daring to counter Indira Gandhi mm -hmm. at that point of time. But what happened today? Today, Bangladesh must find out ways and means of working with India. Then they will become rich. I think it has already started now. Yes, India has yes. So, it is, India is now in its own way de facto a superpower economy. The mm -hmm. confidence that Professor Iyer espouses here is the confident Indian who has grown. At the age of 45, I am a young Indian mm -hmm. from the political side. So, if you look at or from the economic side or from the government side, every Indian is politically conscious. Please understand that. On the streets, they can discuss what's happening. I will say, in the case of Putin, my own view is different. Mm -hmm. I feel here is a case, 1954 they created trouble. So anyway, all those things will come. So the energy politics will come again. It is gas to Europe. Mm -hmm. Understand that. 70% of GDP of Russia is driven by supply of gas to Europe. And the other thing, if Russia stops that supply today, prices of gas will escalate in the world beyond imagination. Energy yeah. tariff will go up. So I tell you, it will affect even India and Bhutan. So mm -hmm. this is the world we are living in. So. Economically, we should be careful. Our petrol prices will go up, our diesel prices will go up. So it is a very sensitive issue. It cannot be U.S. coming and vetoing in the United Nations and saying that we'll do sanction on Russia. This is the most stupid act that is conducted. So now India will speak on these things. People like me are vocal on these things because we are confident. Who is the United States of America to tell India what to do? And Russia what to do? No, Russia is a very powerful country. Okay. So it is so stupid that US is taking them on when they could not. US interfered everywhere in Asia. They created a ruckus in Iraq. They have destroyed, uh, you know, our uh, Afghanistan. Okay. So I'm sorry, but mm. this is all energy politics. Okay. In yeah. the interest of time. Yes. Okay. I think we have a great investment going on in the hydropower. Yes, yes. I think we agree that. And India and Bhutan. And India will invest. Very, India has yeah, no yeah. problem. India yeah. will invest. See, and please we understand. happen to have very great friends. Yes. So on that note, I would like to end this program. Thank all you, Professor. Time for joining us at a very Thank short you. notice Thank and you, hopefully we'll have more programs of this sort in the future. Definitely. And that was Professor Ayer talking to us about sustainable energy and power relating to both Bhutan and India and we touched, uh, touched upon a few little things here and there. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host Ashok Tirwa. This is Goodbye. <laughs>